All right. Uh, so hello everyone. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about uh, uh, the latest uh, hobbyist game that we made. Uh, me being uh, this guy, the left guy was sitting right there, and uh, this this other guy, right? You, you might know. Uh, and so uh, who are we? We're just uh, amateurs. We're just uh, Godot uh, enthusiasts, and uh, we have been making games in Godot for uh, I guess uh, about three years, right? And so we started in 2.1, Godot 2.1, and well, over the years we made some games, all amateur games, so uh, some random projects, right? So uh, the left one and the, the one below are, uh, I just loot them there games, so we made those in 72 hours, it's very nice. And the right one is, uh, well, our big project which we may be going to finish one day, so it's a, a tactical game in the vein of uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, right? All right. So uh, what did we make now? Uh, we made uh, Darky Chan's greatest, uh, Great Expectations, right? It's a point-and-click adventure game, right? And we made this originally for Ludum Dare, but uh, we failed totally in the scope, and it just became too much, and it, uh, well, our scope exploded. Too much dialogue, too much art, and we're only two guys, so, uh, well, we kind of failed. But we're finishing it now, so uh, that's pretty nice, I guess, uh, right? So uh, I'm quickly going to show you a little bit of the game, just so you have an idea, like, uh, okay, how does it look, right? Uh, so uh, we're running in uh, Godot 3.1, the, the lot of latest beta, right? Uh, so I hope it doesn't crash, because otherwise that would be kind of embarrassing. But well, uh, of course not. So, uh, so this is our game, we have the nice slide to uh, uh, become a bit faster. And uh, I'm not going to show you the, the story, so I'm not going to do a new game. But we have this load uh, system uh, which we made, which is pretty nice. Uh, but still looks pretty ugly because we didn't uh, put uh, a style box on it. But okay, so I've prepared this, uh, this save file, right? <coughs> so here you are in some kind of shop, some kind of peddler shop, right? <laughs> and whatever, this guy is standing there with his hand up, sure. Uh, and what you can do is you have these four options. Classical, classical point and click uh, uh, in the classical point and click ways of looking, uh, taking something or talking to something. So, like we can try uh, taking the anvil, and then this this guy says, "Ah, do not touch the merchandise." Sure, it's difficult. And then you have to search for a way that you can take this anvil. It's always the same, man. So in the clean games, classic, right? Uh, so you can also talk to him, and then you get this uh, this nice dialogue, right? So it's a uh, Richard and uh, you would like to buy something and then you get this this silly text like typical so what I uh, noticed as well is we have a lot of dialogue and the dialogue gets uh, progressively worse the later in the night it is so the dialogue that I made at two o'clock is, is really horrible but okay I might come back to it I might not it really depends on it sure all right but uh, we don't want anything okay uh, so we can also go uh, outside of course oh uh, pretty obvious step for a point and click game, right? And then we come to this, uh, this pizza joint and this uh, peddler's place, whatever. It's all pretty bare bones because, well, we're, we're not really artists, but okay. Uh, we're mostly coders, right? And you can go to other places as well. And uh, some story, whatever. Mm -hmm. All right. And then you can try to go in this school door, but then it's locked, and then you need to find a key to open it, whatever, right? Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quit the game. If you want to play it, if you really want to, it's uh, available on, uh, on each. I did the, the demo. This is the alpha. I don't know what it means, but OK. Uh, OK, we're going to quit the game. Didn't crash. Very good, right? So what I'm going to do now is uh, just uh, talk about it, so like some kind of it's not finished yet, but I'm going to call it the post-mortem. It's not really true, but okay. Uh, so I expected uh, actually much more uh, of these types of presentations for some reason, because uh, it seems that uh, the Godot uh, amateurs are really uh, shy of showing their game, it seems. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so some kind of post-mortem. Uh, what, we'll, uh, what I will show is just some, some interesting stuff, some uh, things uh, in Godot that are really, well, strange in my opinion, but we'll see. Uh, and some things that are really strange with my computer as, we see, as we'll see right now. So you all saw the, f the, the flies, 
it's very easy, it's just two stupid sprites in the sprite sheet, and you just uh, animate, uh, animate it with uh, uh, 2D particles. Nothing uh, too fancy about that. But what I wanted to do actually, you had saw the transitions from, uh, uh, from room to room, it went uh, to black, and it went uh, to transparent again. It's just uh, easy with a tween, right? Uh, but I want to do is I wanted to tween the number of particles actually, so that I could uh, have the screen full of light and then uh, decrease it again for a nice transition. But uh, I needed, if I wanted to cover the entire screen, I would need like a, a million, uh, a million flies, and this uh, this kills the uh, the game for uh, a few frames, which is really noticeable. It's, it's a bit, uh, uh, well, it's a pity. But anyway, right? And what I wanted to show as well, like you saw the flies, they have this really nice anim uh, simple animation, but looks pretty nice if you don't pay uh, uh, too close uh, attention to it, right? Uh, but for some reason, on my computer, if I run the web build, which is the best, uh, it only happens on my computer. So I, it, it's, it's due to my computer and probably not to Godot. But let's say that we, uh, uh, I'll show you the, the web build, right? Hopefully you can see it, right? So uh, for some reason, the flies are <laughs> rotating and like blinking as well. <laughs> so uh, some strange things happen, but it's only happening on my computer for some reason. So I guess uh, I, I messed up something in my settings, uh, whatever, right? But I really love this because I, was, I, was, I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> because I sent this to Laurent and he was like, no man, everything's good. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, all right. So the next thing is uh, the control nodes, right? So uh, if you want to make a menu, right, on the there, uh, well, you want to do it quick and, quick and dirty. You only have 72 hours, so you want to do it really fast, uh, which means that uh, you sometimes want to use absolute positions, which is, well, never a good idea, but if you, uh, if you have time constraints, then it can really help you uh, get along. Now, the thing is that in Godot, uh, there is a, uh, a, a strange thing with control nodes that uh, I'm sure that uh, the developers that are here, which are like 50% of the people, already know. But uh, I think it might be interesting for the, the others, the, uh, the guys who don't know this, right? Which is the case that, let's say you have some label, right? And you want to uh, find the, uh, the size of the texture rectangle of this label, right? So I've made some very small project to show this. Uh, yes. Okay, so here we have some label, all right? And what this program will do is it will just write in this label, I am a label. Super easy. Okay, so uh, we run this, right? And it's like I said, I am a label, right? But uh, before uh, you put I am a label into your, uh, your label, the label, the texture rectangle was actually smaller. So what do I do? I ask him, what is your texture reckoning? What is the size? And it says 40, 14, right? Just some uh, vector two, whatever, right? Uh, but uh, I set this up wrong, okay. Spoilers, okay. Uh, but after you put I am a label, and then you ask in the same uh, ready uh, function, fun uh, ready method, you ask again, what is the size after? Uh, what is the size, right? you get the same size, which is of course not true because it is actually grown. But in the code, this is uh, not true because the, uh, the control node only updates after uh, an idle frame, right? So what you can do is you can uh, yield, yield the frame. So what do you do then? You, yes, what? Yeah, but yeah, okay. Uh, but okay, if you yield, yield the frame then then it gives the correct size, right? So what's the, the source code? It's just very easy, right? So what do I do is I ask for the size, I put uh, the text in my label, and then uh, depending on this Boolean, this export Boolean, I either yield the frame, so I uh, stop the, f the method until there is an idle frame, or I don't do this. And then I ask the, uh, the size of the rectangle again. And in the second case, it gives the, the correct new size 
of the rec of the of the label, right? And uh, if you want to do uh, these menus quick and dirty with absolute coordinates, this is really really confusing. So, uh, right? So uh, this works with idle frame, but you really have to do this with idle frame, otherwise it it won't uh, just work. So so why is this? Well, uh, it's kind of logical. Uh, so you, you only want to update the size of these control nodes just for optimization purposes. If you have an entire method uh, and you, you change a lot of things, you don't want every time to make a call. You want uh, to call this at the end, all of them. But uh, it's extremely counterintuitive if you're a Godot noob, right? So you really don't get it. Well, why is this happening? So this is just uh, an interesting thing. Like uh, if you know this, then it's no problem. You can just yield, uh, wait for a yield frame and then everything is okay. But uh, it's seemingly, uh, well, mm, how do you say it? Well, it, it's really strange if, if you don't know this. You're like, well, how, how is the size still the same after I put like a, a lorem ipsum of uh, 200 lines in it? So that's something, uh, well, we en I encountered, which uh, wa was not really, uh, was a bit counterintuitive because I consider myself still a god of noob. All right, uh, so, okay, so what's really nice, Ali, what's really nice? Uh, yeah, what, uh, what's really nice as another thing, right, and which you should always do for an RPG or for uh, a game with a lot of content, is you want to, well, uh, make an engine on an engine, right? And you actually don't really want to interact with, with the Godot engine, yes? You want to make your own uh, framework on the Godot engine, and then you just want to work with uh, some some data files, so either this could be a custom language, whatever, or uh, in our case, it's always JSON, right? Because uh, well, JSON is, uh, is pretty handy with things, and uh, making a specific language is all, all right. Well, you could do it, but we don't really know how to do it, so. All right, uh, so in our case, this means that everything you, uh, you saw during the, the game uh, can actually be edited by, uh, uh, by the story guy without him having to touch any code, and this is always nice. And it, this should always be like this in a game, actually, okay, big game, right? So in our case, this just means that uh, we just have some uh, some JSON, right? So if you take, uh, if you try to take the anvil, right? This is the text for taking the anvil, and we have some entry. We have some name, of course. We have some entries, like you have the start, uh, and the start is the default, actually. Uh, and we have another entry, and that's, that's if uh, the guy, Richard, he recognized you, and then you can take the anvil. But before that, it always goes to the, uh, uh, the entry start, the default entry, which is, uh, is written here, and just like, okay, please, sir, do not touch the merchandise. And that's it, right? And uh, we also have the, the portrait and the name for the speaker, right? And in that way, we can make really complex uh, stuff, really complex dialogues, uh, without having to meddle into the uh, Godot itself, right? And uh, so this, uh, okay. So we have the room, so the room, the, the, the peddler room, so the, the shop, right? And it's just like, okay, we have a certain amount of doors, and it's just uh, like a, a tech, yes, a clickable zone that you define here, right? And you can define more of them. Uh, and some objects which you have in your room. But you can all be edited without you having to touch the engine. Right? Uh, so that's just something I wanted to show. Right? Uh, the source code oh, is all available. And if you for some, for some reason want to check it out, always welcome. Yes? Uh, we also have editors for the room. So like the polygon points and stuff for the doors, you don't have to manually uh, put them in. Yeah, OK. Uh, you can quickly show the editor. Uh, no, not here. Yeah, it's on editors, but they're pretty ugly at the moment. Uh, and uh, sometimes they crash. But so I'm not sure that this won't crash. Huh? crash. Right? So it's like a room editor, and there's some kind of room. Right? This is the default room, right? And we have some, uh, some, some object here. And we, we can re move it around and put it on the correct position, whatever. And we can uh, 
give the name, give it uh, some kind of Z index to put it on the correct position. And then we also have an edit button. I don't know if this works. Uh, oh, it works. Okay. Uh, I put it in. Awesome. Uh, and then we have this guy, right? And uh, for some reason, you can pick up this guy, right? And then he has a certain icon. And you can uh, put the icon on a correct scale if you want uh, an icon like this for some reason, sure. Why not? Uh, and then we have the, um, the text, like if you look at this guy, what should it do? Should it spawn a dialogue? Possible? Or should there be some text on your screen? Like uh, in this case, uh, it, everything fits in my pocket. If you, if you take him, sure. Right? Uh, and uh, so that's the editor we have. And we have also the doors, right? So the doors are just like uh, some handles uh, on, uh, on a polygon, or a polygon 2D, right? So maybe a question that I anticipated is uh, why didn't we use Escoria? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so the thing is that making the engine was part of the fun for us. We really wanted to make this engine, uh, but we're not gonna commercialize it, so we're not uh, enemies of you. <laughs> oh man. Okay, uh, sure. Okay, so uh, then uh, for the background, right? So the thing is, the backgrounds we cheated a little bit. I cheated. Is it cheating? We don't know. Uh, anyway, but what Laurent did is just he took uh, like uh, some images of a kitchen, and he just traced it in Krita, uh, because well, we're not really artists, so uh, perspective is uh, is really hard to to get right. Because if there is a little bit uh, the wrong angle, then the human mind is really good at uh, at uh, perceiving it, right? So what we did we do? We just took the uh, some kind of image, some background, and we just uh, trace it. Uh, it looks pretty nice. Maybe it can use some more details, but yeah, also like it's weird, like more a broad perspective, and I found that it's really hard to visualize that like without a fixed lens. No, yeah. so the same thing with uh, with the peddler, right? There are a bit more uh, things in the peddler shop. <laughs> but Laurent was too lazy, I think. All right, uh, uh, and that's it. Okay, so co in conclusion, uh, I don't really have a conclusion. Uh, I like Godot for prototyping. Uh, and, uh, well, next time, if you have a project, then give this guy an email and say, like, I want to give a small presentation because uh, it's possible. And uh, we won't log at you. <laughs> Maybe you will. All right, uh, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs>
resize the particle buffer. Uh, we could okay. probably add um, one more parameter, which is the amount of fill or something like that. Okay. So yeah. amount and then amount of fill. Mm -hmm. So you can resize that one without changing the buffer. That's so that would be one of the things that like resizing yeah. the particle yeah. that holds yeah, it. Yeah, because it's a GPU yeah. texture of the virtual particle. Actually, no, it uses a buffer, but it runs from fill buffer. Well. So that we thought. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I understood. Understood the pun, man. I understood the pun. Yeah. Right. Three point two. Three point two. Sure, man. <laughs> right. Any other question? You make some advertisement for a toy. That's why I have it. Thanks. Sure, man. No problem. Never used it. So I should probably yeah. try it once. Let's uh, we'll see. Okay, uh, so I guess I uh, okay. So I didn't understand the question, but. Uh, uh, how do you store the conditions? Okay, uh, I can quickly show you the, the save file actually that I loaded in the beginning, right? So uh, I prepared this one actually, but uh, I didn't show it, right? Uh, so this is the save file actually, right? So it's just current true, and then what you have here in your inventory. I didn't show the inventory for some reason, which is kind of stupid, but okay, whatever. So what have, uh, you have in your inventory? So if you have, you have some love letter, sure. And uh, you have the titular uh, character, Dagitan, right? And then you just have the, the player state. This is just uh, all the state, right? So when you load this, then he looks at all the states and checks, does this room have any of these states? And if it does, then uh, it either draws something or it doesn't, right? What? Yeah, we also have integer states. So body back is one of our uh, integer states that we uh, we iterate. Well, we need it for some puzzles. Like, we have some puzzle at the moment that you have to, uh, you have to uh, have a heating installation. I have to put f uh, fuel into your heating installation, but uh, it's typical. I, you have some only have uh, uh, either can put uh, three liter in, six liter, or wh whatever, right? So we need some kind of state, player state. So it's a global. It's a singleton uh, that we auto load, uh, which has uh, fuel in tank, something like that. Double, double points and then a certain number, right? And that's where why we have this, uh, these things as well. Yeah, and it also needs to check into the dialogue. Yeah, so the dialogue stuff as well, right? 